smallest unit, the very simplest thing you can break something down into is an atom. That's the name given to it. Atom and element are synonymous. If you take water as an ice cube and then melt it to water, have you done a chemical reaction? No. If you let it sit on the counter today and come back next time and it's all evaporated away, did we do a chemical reaction? Yes. Can water be broken down into smaller parts? Yes. How would you do that? Have you ever seen any experiments done any in high school? Imagine a tank with a little bit of light salt water in it and two electrodes. They would bubble. From, at the right voltage, from one of them would come a gas, from the other would come a gas. What are those two gases? Hydrogen. Hydrogen. And oxygen. So, water can be broken down into smaller components. Would that be a chemical or a physical reaction to do electrolysis on water? Chemical. Chemical. Okay, don't be afraid to say your answer clear. If you're wrong, we all learn. If you're right, you feel good, and we all learn. Okay, let's take just the hydrogen. The hydrogen that comes from the electrolysis of water, can that be broken down into any simpler form. What's the atomic number of hydrogen? One. One. What is its atomic mass? One point oh 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 seven. And do we remember why the mass <coughs> is larger than one atomic mass unit? We talked about this on Monday. Some hydrogens are more, have more than one proton. One proton, by definition, makes it hydrogen. If the atom has two protons, by definition, it is helium. Okay. Hydrogen with one proton can have an extra neutron or two to make it hydrogen, deuterium, or tritium. But if it has... One proton, it is hydrogen. Okay. In this text uh, slide, they'll go over and over some facts, but deeper into the slides, you'll see where the facts come from. But let's just review the facts. They're kind of common facts, but I want you to appreciate how, when it was that people actually came to the understandings that we have, even when we know very little chemistry, but the smallest unit of any material, when you break it down, is the element. How many elements are there on the periodic table or on that song I shared with you? 118. And some of them are very, very common. Some are very, very rare. Not in your text. I think it's not in your text, but what is the most abundant by mass element in the whole cosmos? But it's the lightest element. Your answer is right. My supplementary fact makes it even more amazing that the mass, if you took the whole cosmos and separated it into elements, had a huge periodic table. The box, the number one box, would have hydrogen in it that is 75% of everything else added up. The sun fuels itself by consuming hydrogen at the rate of millions of pounds per second. And it does not chemistry, but nuclear chemistry, 
where it pulls the hydrogens together and makes helium. And it's doing that at such a rate, and 70, well, I'll quote the numbers to you at a more appropriate time, but some of the mass of hydrogen going to helium is lost. Do you know what that delta mass becomes? If I say this huge mass of hydrogen is converted to helium, and let's say there's 10 to a very large number per second, tons of helium. I forgot the numbers in my IQ. I can pull it up. Um, let's say 10 to the X, where X is a huge number per second, is converted, this is hydrogen, is converted to helium. And this may be like 0 0.99 times 10 to the X. So there's 0 0.01 times 10 to the X of helium total mass that's lost. If you take that change in mass times the speed of light squared, what man do you think of when you see this equation? Einstein. Einstein. The mass times the speed of light squared, according to Einstein and those that have come after him, have been understood to be what? What equals mc squared? E. Energy. We live on a planet that receives some of this energy. Sun is 93 million miles away. It sh sends all of this, I'll call it delta m, because this is delta m. All that energy is sent throughout 360 degrees in all three dimensions. A little fraction of that, if this is the sun and we're 93 million miles away, appreciate the fact that we get only a little bit, that our share of that little bit is all we need to make our plants grow, to give us a sunburn, to give us light, to give us light at night as the light bounces off the moon. Anybody seen Mars recently? The lady yesterday that gives me PT on my thumb said it was the closest and brightest it will be in 800 years, and she couldn't believe I had missed it. Can anyone corroborate her fact? Sitting there in the PT chair, I did use my iPhone. She's right. And I missed it again last night. Okay. Elements have an awesome impact on our lives. We are a collection of elements. Most of our body is made up of simple elements. Hydrogen and oxygen coming together to make H2O, water, most of our body, don't have a percentage right now, but you know, is water. Four common elements make up most of life as we know it. Who knows what those four are? Hydrogen, we've already mentioned. Carbon. Oxygen and nitrogen. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen make carbohydrates. <coughs> nitrogen is involved in amino acids and proteins. It's very complex. It's very simple. It's marvelous from either perspective. Okay, let's move along and see if we can learn more about the building blocks of the world we live in. <coughs> there are not 118 chairs in here. You know you are unique. You know you are a lot like those around you. And part of the nature 
of the periodic table, just as we are created unique but similar, each element on the periodic table is unique, but it's similar. And we're going to study some of the similarities and why they're positioned on the table that way. I wish the periodic table could just be a series of numbers, where the only thing in this block is 27, 28, 29, 30. And you would see that it's an orderly arrangement of blocks. If you have a cousin, nephew, that could stack the blocks, in that order, and he stacked them that way every time, you begin to think, one, there was some intelligence, some insight. Okay. An element is made of three subatomic particles. We talked about these. An electron, a, nu a nucleus, which is made of, well, and in the nucleus, nucleus are protons, and neutrons. The charge of which two of these are the same in magnitude but opposite in sign? Protons and electrons. Pro protons and electrons. And it's important to keep that fact in mind. And things of different charge attract each other. And that's the basis on which our world is made. Neutra which two of these weigh the same? Protons and neutrons. Protons and neutrons. Which of these here are the lightest? Which is the lightest? Okay. And we'll come up with a number that shows how much lighter they are. 